Good morning, everybody. You are tuned in to the Indiana State Police Roadshow. I'm Sergeant Rich Myers, your host for the Roadshow. And with us today is Sergeant Jason Miller from the Indianapolis Post. We want to thank the Indiana State Police Alliance and Cops for Kids, the subsidiary of the Indiana State Police Alliance, for their continued support, Tom Trial, for the uh, Indiana State Police audio visual man and guru we put us on uh, youtube we thank him for being with us today and helping us out so jason thank you for being here today good morning rich how are I, you i appreciate you coming in here yet i know you had a uh, little uh, sick child there at home and got her taken care of and yep. so i appreciate you being with us and and talking to us today so we're uh, going to talk about a uh, something that you do for the indiana state police but uh, let's get a little background here when did jason miller start the state police and why well, I came on the department in uh, 2004 Okay. after uh, spending some time uh, down in Charlotte, North Carolina on the job. and um, You were a police officer in Charlotte? I was. Really? I was down there for uh, seven years. Okay. Yeah. So so did you see uh, online or how did you find out, hey, the Indiana State Police are hiring? Uh, First Sergeant Paul Suiting, Bloomington yeah. Post. Yeah. Uh, longtime friend. Okay. Um, Paul and I grew up down in Nashville, Indiana together. And uh, I was home. Uh, on holiday and in Nashville. Into, yep, ran into him in Nashville, and and uh, he had been on the job for a few years before before I came back. Uh-huh. And he said, "Did you know we're hiring?" And I said, "I didn't." At that point, uh, I grabbed one of our online applications, filled it out, and here you are, Shazam! <laughs> that's right. So, so uh, Nashville. You grew up in Nashville. I did. Grew up in Nashville. Wow. So, uh, yeah, don't, I don't even have an accent, do I? <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, and you're uh, so. Were you right in Nashville or Brown County? Uh, pretty much right in Nashville, Cloudcrest really? Hill, right overlooking uh, the Brown County Inn. So yeah, yep. yeah, good place to eat. Yeah, it's a great place. <laughs> so I love being down there. So where did you go when you came to the academy? Uh, I went to the region, ah. Zone One, uh, uh, the Borman Expressway. Mm-hmm. I worked up there. Uh, um, Spent uh, about a year and a half up there before I was able to transfer down to Bloomington. Okay. And I worked Owen County uh, for, uh, oh, I don't know, about a year and a half. And then um, an opportunity came to be on Governor Daniels' uh, security team detail. Okay. So exactly spent, protection. That's exactly right. So I spent some time with the governor at that point. Um, moved to Hendricks County to be a little bit closer to the capital. Right. Um, uh, and uh, my family was... Uh, was also working there as well in in uh, Plainfield. Okay, and so uh, got annexed to District Fifty Two, and here I am. Yeah, yeah, we uh, both kind of got exactly moved up here, District exactly. Fifty Two, and work up here together. And we, yep, we enjoy it. Yeah, good good times. And so, uh, your uh, when did your promotion come in? Uh, I got promoted. It'll be three years in this coming February. And acting as a squad sergeant in in what area of district? Uh, well, I started out in Marion County on afternoons. Okay. I uh, had the west side. And then um, uh, recently, as of uh, about three or four months ago, I was um, moved to Boone County Squad Sergeant. So I have all of Boone County now, uh, yeah. all three shifts, uh, along with uh, a couple of extra guys that um, uh, work in afternoons in Marion County still on the west side. So I've got a little a, a little bit, you know how it is in, in Indianapolis. Everybody yeah. tends to migrate towards Marion County a lot. So right. we, we share the wealth among the squad sergeants. Okay, well, good. Well, let's jump into what we come here to talk about to, and one of your uh, expertise here that you do. You're a crash reconstructionist for the United State Police. I am. When did you, when did you go to school for that? Uh, well, it was when I was still in... Uh, Bloomington District. Okay. So, uh, oh, about five years ago, I guess, uh, I got the opportunity. Bloomington at that point didn't have a reconstructionist. Uh, we had just started using um, the Florida-based training company, IPTM. It's uh, a school down there um, that's very uh, works well with law enforcement. Okay. Um, we got a couple of seats uh, in their class that they had out at uh, IMPD's academy. Mm-hmm. And um, it was, uh, oh, there's three phases to it. So about uh, maybe 400 hours total. Intense school? Yeah, it is. A lot of math, um, a lot of formulas. Uh, It's all about dynamics. It's um, 
It's not about drawing charts and um, and taking photos. It's it's uh, it's basically becoming a detective uh, at a crash scene. So um, you know where we have detectives that specialize in homicide, burglaries, etc. We're we're evidence technicians, detectives for um, mostly fatal, sometimes serious bodily kind of right. crashes. But usually when it's when it involves criminal circumstances um or neglect or or neglect or some something like that it's um um you know we um we try to focus on areas where maybe alcohol is involved right um yeah certainly where where someone's negligence led directly to someone else's injury or or death so you're not going to probably be uh called out and i'm sure a lot of these are call outs you know because you're not uh, a single car crash probably is not going to get a reconstruction, right? No, because usually um, we may come out and look at it if, say, the troop or or the agency that's requested some assistance with it, say, can't figure out how the vehicle ended up in a certain certain way, right. um, and there may be some hint of. Um, a hit and run or some sort of third party involvement or um, even even some sort of um, uh, issue with the roadway. You know, okay. Maybe if there's a question whether or not uh, the roadway surface um, was an issue or, uh, you know, so, something that might have contributed to it uh, indirectly. Uh, but usually a single vehicle crash we won't because um, unfortunately a lot of those we find out uh, rather quickly are either speed related or from the corner. Unfortunately, we find out that they had some form of intoxicant in their system that um, that may have impaired their judgment behind the wheel, and and it they only brought harm to themselves. Yeah, yeah. Well, again, you're listening to the State Police Roadshow brought to you by the Indiana State Police Alliance. Cops for Kids, a subsidiary of the Indiana State Police Alliance. Sergeant Jason Miller is with me, and we're talking about crash reconstruction. I know, Jason, when I came on, uh, a couple of years ago, there was a lot of, uh, I'd see the guys out at the crash reconstruction working with him. I'd be a crash, uh, hold this end of the tape <laughs> and I got to do this. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and they even had, uh, uh, tires, things made up with certain weight on them and they would mm-hmm. pull them along the, uh, a, a drag. That's an old fashioned drag sled mm-hmm. yeah. that would be to use to find the, the frictional value of the roadway. Yeah. Um, is that uh, anything that's even being remotely used anymore? Well, I'm sure uh, there are some old school reconstructionists out there who probably still have a drag sled in a trunk or uh, or uh, out in a barn somewhere that they used to use or or could use if they had to, uh, but not usually so much anymore. Most uh, most roadways um, and most courts have adopted um, 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 a system of or a charting system. You know, if it's wet, if it's snowy, each it's kind of become. Um, um, a court approved, uh, system of determining that very rarely do we need to go out, uh, asphalt to asphalt. It's more of a, is it new asphalt? Is it old okay. asphalt? You know, is it gravel? Um, the, we've had so, you know, you can drag it so many times and the change right. will be so minimal that most reconstructionists, uh, unless there's, unless there's certain circumstances, maybe a substance on the roadway that was spilled that then right. prior or something like that, where, where, where it's just out of left field, how that mm-hmm. got on the roadway, they might then do that. But most of them don't, wouldn't use that anymore. They would use a chart nowadays. Um, but we use, um, no more tape measures. It's lasers. It's, um, they actually have, uh, the big thing our agency's trying to use is photogrammetry, which is, uh, yeah. just amazing. Um, I've the seen ability. that at some mm-hmm. of the uh, crashes that you've worked, and that involves a lot of cones for some yes, reason. Yes, yes, cones and markers. Because what um, what you do is you take a. It's very interesting stuff. You take very. You take a series of 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 photos, overlapping photos with certain um, with with preset camera settings that don't change, and uh, and you imp you take uh, photos where you're trying to get <clears throat> the same points hence the cones, the same points in as many photos as possible. Okay. And then you upload those into this very neat little program that then allows you, or then takes those photos. And as you identify the points through each photo, it it uses uh, geometry to determine uh, how those photos relate to each other. And it can create 3D images 
um, and exact points to within inches of each other, um, it's very accurate and it's very good for court because you can then take those turned out to be a lot of times the same photos that we'll use in court um, if it gets that far. And those um, the jury can see exactly, you know, what you saw. And where would you place those cones? What would be a deciding factor on, I want to put a cone here? Well, if you, it's kind of like an artist. You're, you, you want to build borders, you know, so you'll do the edges of the roadway, so many, maybe 20, 30 feet apart. Okay. Um, you'll, you will, you'll build the roadway with them. You'll build uh, points on a vehicle. So you may want to put one at the t top of a car. It really likes uh, a good angle. So uh, if you can get elevation, um, on it, things like that. But you would put, it's, um, it, it, it might, you might want put one at the beginning of a skid mark at the end of a skid mark. You may put it, um, anywhere that, anywhere that you believe in your investigation is something you want to capture, right. um, for, um, uh, for a possible measurement. Um, you can use it. Um, you could use it to, uh, to, uh, there are small markers you could use if you had a lot of crush damage or something like that. But most of the time, uh, we will use it s simply because it's very, very accurate. Mm -hmm. um, you can then import that into um, a program that we're using now called Crash Zone. It will take the photogrammetry measurements in and then you can do, um, as I said, 3D rendering. But not only that, you can add, if you've done it correctly, you can add uh, motion to it. So I can actually put on a screen and show exactly how a vehicle came in, struck another vehicle, the dynamics of how both vehicles spun off. And I can put it just like you would see on TV in a, in a 3D a 3d image with, with speeds and, and, uh, and distances traveled, uh, both, um, controlled and uncontrolled. And, uh, it's a very powerful tool to use, especially as I said, when it gets to court. Yeah. I was going to say, it's got to help a jury out for him to see that. In 3D oh yes. There's, there's no more, there's no more losing them in the language. A lot of times we get, that's the hard part right. is, is, is speaking English <laughs> when <laughs> yeah. you're dealing with those kind of yeah. equations and, and momentum. A lot of people don't understand the concept of force and mass and, and things like that. And so it's, uh, uh, they don't have to with that. They can, they can see it. And then really all you have to do for the purposes of, of the cases is, is, um, is describe the, the, the specifics for the record. Yeah. Other than that, they, they see it. They, they know what happened and, and are able to ask questions right off of it. Now, this is going to be an off-the-wall question. You may not know the answer to this, but does this have to be a stationary surface? Could DNR use this on boat crashes, or is, is that applicable? Uh, no, they wouldn't, they wouldn't really be able to use it on boat uh, because it would be very difficult to um, – it, it usually takes something that is um, – it uh, that comes to some kind of final rest. Okay. And so on a body of water now, where they 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 could, um, if they had a if they had a crash that say uh, where they they took the boat out of the water and they wanted to for the purposes of measurements or the or the purposes of identifying, it, it photogrammetry works for uh, crime scenes a lot. You know, I've it, seen them use them there. They use yeah. it in crime scenes a lot. You'll have, uh, um, but once again, that's a static. Right. You know, location. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't know if they could there, but they could certainly use it for something off the water. Yeah. Um, uh, four wheeler it, crash or absolutely. something like that. Absolutely. Or, the shootings. I mean, shootings. there's all kinds of, you know, um, poaching. If they yeah. can get it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we've uh, we've about used our time up here. We're down to one minute and we've talked and I'm just getting on the point the very edge of this and it's very exciting but it's it's moving forward all the time i'm sure oh absolutely that's one of the hardest things that we have is um is staying on top of it um it's uh it's one of those we refer to it as a you know it's a second language and and as you know if you don't use it you lose it and right. so um with the photogrammetry um with with just getting out and doing the diagrams and the measurements you know i I'll, a lot of times guys will take their their markers out for photogrammetry or 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 they'll they'll do they'll mark their house yeah. And, and just take photos of their house just so they can get into the program and use it. That's great. Well, that's wonderful to to know and to uh, to learn about. And I appreciate you being here, Jason. Oh, it's been my pleasure. Again, Sergeant Jason Miller from the Indiana State Police Post. He's a uh, crash reconstructionist with the Indiana State Police, also a squad sergeant. 
uh, for our post. We want to thank you for being here today. We want to thank the Indiana State Police Alliance for being with us and the continued support. Cops for Kids, we want to thank them. Remember, uh, buckle up, especially over these holidays, and keep those kids buckled up. We'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye.